Welcome to sunny Clayton, North Carolina, where I'm joined by Robbie Sutherland and your host, Joel Grimes. We're going to virtually showcase some exciting new technology by Caterpillar, Cat Command. So we're going to put this technology to work. Robbie, why don't you get comfortable in this beautiful Cat Command station, which is going to allow us to connect to machines, non-line of sight, and remotely run them. So you can see a 938 Cat small wheel loader that we've got up here. We're going to go ahead and connect to that guy and put it to work. Now, Cat Command is an umbrella technology for remote control operation of a equipment. Command for loading, command for dozing, command for excavating. A range of Caterpillar products are going to come online, all of which are going to be able to be run from this universal operating station, our Cat Command station. Now, you might ask, why? Why is Caterpillar looking at remote control technology? Well, when you talk with folks that are in the industry and the challenges that they've got, typically we hear a couple repeating themes, one of which is safety. Safety is paramount in my decision-making process. Or getting operators, retaining operators, training operators. And we believe that the CAT Command technology is going to help us with a couple of those challenges. Now, as we put this teaser out, you sent us some questions and we're going to answer them as we go live here. But as Robbie goes ahead and connects to this 938M, what we're going to do is go through a startup sequence. So Robbie's going to go ahead and power the machine on. It's kind of equivalent to turning that key to the run position. He's then going to honk in. So he's going to push and hold a button, which is going to honk to let all of the ground crew know we're about to go live with this machine. The light codes on the machine are going to go through a sequence, starting with solid blue, connecting into flashing blue. We're now connected and ready to go to work. Now, as Robbie starts to onboard, he gets a awesome vision screen that's going to come up very similar to what you have in the cab with some added vision all the way around. Now a couple of the questions that you guys have asked us online is, hey, how do I get that seat of the pants feel back if I'm sitting in a, a remote station? And Robbie, how would you respond to that question? Well, the simple answer, Joel, is you don't get the seat of the mm. pants feel. Uh, what you have to rely on are the automation controls here on the machine and visual cues in the area that you're working. So one of the first things you're gonna do when you sit down and you start to, to prepare to go to work is you're gonna go, and you're gonna go in and you're gonna set your kick outs. So we're gonna set our tilt kick out, we're gonna set our raise kick out, and our lower kick out. Now these are imperative that you use these because you lack, lack depth perception and distance perception when the 2D world here, so you need to be sure that you've got your tilt, raise, and lower kick out. That way you're sure your bucket's level, you're sure you're over the height for where you're going to dump, and you're not scraping the ground when you're driving around. Now the second thing we're going to do is we want to go in here to our settings, and we're going to set our rim pull. And what we don't want to do is burn our tires up and, and shorten our tire life, so we're going to set that rim pull to a medium. And we know that because we're on dry concrete here. Now if we were on a wet surface, we'd probably go down a little lower, but medium seems to suit our purposes here, so we'll go ahead and set that. So it sounds like the answer is we're going to use assist type features to give us that seat of the pants feel so we can put this machine to work. That's exactly right. Sir. All right, well, should we show our audience what it means to put a CAT command machine to work? Sure thing. All right, Let's little. Take the parking brake off, the hydraulic lock off, my seat right, and we're ready to go to work. So, Robbie, I'll just talk through what you're doing for our online audience while you're doing it. So, Robbie's looking here at this forward vision screen, and notice he's got some augmented lines. That green line is giving him a little cue on is he going straight? Is he trending in the right direction? Now, notice as he goes into reverse, he's actually got augmented lines on the rear screen, showing him the width of the machine, and also distance ticks behind it, kind of three feet, six feet, nine feet behind him. Now, the other thing I want to point out is he's got almost a bird's eye view. 
looking all the way around this machine. So as he navigates this closed course here in Clayton, North Carolina, as he takes those hard lefts, as he takes those hard rights, he's got a field of view where he can see exactly what's going on. Arguably a field of view which is better than you actually have sitting in the cab of this 938M. Now, as he's dumped that gravel in, he's gonna pop it into reverse, use his assist feature. He went back to automatic level. As he backs away and he clears the wall, he's gonna trigger that float. It's gonna go down and catch itself just a few inches above ground. So now Robbie, he's just concentrating on driving back to that next pass. That linkage has got a bucket this level and is floating about two inches above the ground. Robbie, you made that look easy. Next challenge. Why don't you put a pass in that 725 out there and let's do some real work with this Cat Command technology. Sure thing, Zo. So as Robbie plunges on in there, you can see he lift to set his tires. He racked on in, that's an impressive looking bucket. And he's gonna do a hard turn as he approaches this 725. Now again, notice the field of view that he's got all the way around this machine so he can see what's going on. Now as he approaches the truck, he's gonna go ahead and pull that into its lift detent. It's gonna automatically go up to that top point and it's also going to use a technology that we call snubbing or cylinder dampening. So it goes up to that upper kick out point. It will slowly bring that linkage to a close. Now he's using visual cues to make sure that he's not going to kiss that truck. So on that pass, what Robbie was looking at is the top of that truck bed and how it lined up with the top of that linkage torque tube. So on this next pass, let's go ahead and dive back into that pile and, and do another cycle. Um, what we're gonna focus on on this next pass, we're gonna pause for a couple seconds and I'm gonna invite the crew here to help me jump between the loader cat, conventional view, and what Robbie can see in this cat command view. So Robbie, as you jump in and go ahead, lift, set your tires, and if I could, invite you to just pause there for a second. Now, if we're looking at the cat command views to start with, what I wanna point out is look how good Robbie's viewpoint is of the tires, of the bucket corners. He's got this commanding view top down because that forward facing camera is actually way up on top of the cab looking down. So it's almost like he's two foot higher in the cab. Now, if you would go ahead and hop to the traditional in cab view. Now, what I wanna highlight here is still pretty good view sitting in that 938M, but a little bit more challenging to see the tires. Those left hand camera views that we had in the vision view really helped to see the side of the bucket a little bit more challenged in the conventional view in the machine. So Robbie, if I could, why don't I invite you to go ahead and throw that pass onto that 725 and we'll pause again on his approach and dump into that truck. But these visual cues, these assist features will help you as an operator get comfortable with the CAT command system. So on his approach here again, he'll go ahead and pull that into lift detent. The machine's gonna automatically go back up to where he set that kick out point. It's gonna hydraulically snub or dampen as it gets there. Looking pretty clean, Robbie. Now Robbie is watching the upper bed and the torque tube top to get a sense of his depth or his approach into that truck. And right about there, he's ready to go ahead and dump that in. Now before he does, why don't you jump us back to the conventional view from a traditional operator standpoint in the cab. Notice you kind of have this little sliver of window looking under the linkage torque tube over the truck bed. Now if we jump back to the CAT command view, you know, Robbie's viewpoint is actually over top of that torque tube. He's looking into that truck. So as he goes ahead and dumps that on out, you know, nice, clean, he knows what's going on, he can manage that heap. Now, one of the questions that you sent us in and online is, all right guys, I understand how the technology is gonna work, but 
do I take a compromise in production in any way? How long does it take you to get comfortable running a machine in CAT command? And this might be a great question for Robbie here, our professional demo operator. Robbie, how long from the first time you saw CAT command to running it proficiently did you say it was? Well, typically what we found is it takes about a day to, to get somewhat proficient at it, to, to kind of feel like you know what you're doing. And then I'd say about about 40 hours of operation on the machine to start to, to get proficient to what you once were uh, sitting in the actual seat. So about 40 hours until you're there. And then I can tell you too, from the time I spent, those first 40 hours kind of mentally taxing is your through what is that that sequence of events getting that muscle memory but physically at the end of the day you feel pretty good because you're not getting beat up now Robbie if I were to ask you do you think you take a reduction in total productivity after you learn how to run the machine or can you get back to that same rate I think you can get back pretty close to the same rate and and then with with time savings from not having to go out to the field uh, not climbing up and all, off the machine uh, not having to get off the machine and go to lunch when you break areas down the hall, I think I think your production rate is going to be actually higher. Yeah, that that's awesome. You know, you know, sitting here in a command station, you know, the, the restrooms right there, maybe the microwave to warm up your lunches right there, the coffee makers right there. Get up and take a short walk, but you can get back to work pretty quickly. That traveling to and from the job site, it's almost eliminated with this technology. That's right. Um, now, another question you sent in, you might be wondering, you know, where does this apply? What does this mean to me in, in my business? Where, where does CAT Command make sense? And, and we see two key arenas where CAT Command really makes sense. The first, taking an operator like Robbie and taking him out of the machine, which might be working in hazardous environments. Maybe it's an environmental hazard like battery recycling or industrial waste or steel dust, those types, nuclear plant cleanup, those type of environments where it's safer to pull the operator out. But the other is efficiency of operator. And this one's really intriguing because Robbie can traverse geography at the push of a button. This machine and this CAT command station can be on opposite sides of the world. And as long as the site communications piece is quick enough, you can connect and go to work. So the idea of an operator traversing time zones or hopping from site to site to site, wherever the work might be, is a really intriguing one. So if you pause and think about that, you know, concrete batch plants, which maybe have sites every 30, 40 miles, and that workload has different peaks and valleys throughout the day, an operator could hop between multiple sites to do that work. Agriculture, often in more remote type areas where maybe it's, it's difficult to get operators on farm. Could these command stations be in more urban areas where there's a workforce that could join and go at on farm work? The other really interesting thing about this is folks who've got mobility challenges, maybe couldn't successfully get on and off that machine every day, but could certainly walk up or wheel themselves up and get into a command station like that. There's a whole field of population out there which could be employed to successfully do this type of work. Work. So exciting times, the technology is here now. The CAT small wheel loader family, our 926M, our 930M, and our 938M are in production now. And let me up that. Every machine that we've built since 2016 is ready to accept this technology. So even if you've got an M-series small wheel loader now, this technology likely would fit onto your machine and we could put this technology to work for you. Whether that's a safety focus, or whether that's an efficiency of an operator focus, solving some of those challenges that you've got. Now on the safety side, definitely paramount. A couple things that I'd like to point out. The first is, notice, I don't don't have any safety gear on. Robbie doesn't have any safety gear on. In fact, Robbie doesn't even have a seat belt in this command station because he simply doesn't need it. Now, if he were to just get up, stand up, what would the behavior be? Thanks, Robbie. It's going to automatically engage the park brake. It's going to automatically engage the implement lock. It's going to put the machine in a safe state. Now, as Robbie were to sit back down and get ready to commission it, he would have to go ahead and trigger that park brake, trigger that implement lock to go back to work, but we've protected the operator. 
The other thing that we know from early adopters of this technology, and several are out there running it, is change management and enabling the ground crew. The machine still needs fuel. It still needs its oil checked. But we want to make sure the ground crew is just as safe as the operator. And one of the pieces that we highly encourage with is what's called an all stop. The way this works, if I were to hit this stop, anything within the broadcast radius of this stop is going to come to a complete stop. So you could safely approach that machine, or if something was going on, you could pull that down. The operator also has a stop right here on the command station that he could pop, and it would bring that machine to a complete stop. Now, operators of all ranges, from the first time they've ever run to have running a machine for 30 years. The change management piece is real and bringing operators into the command station, showing them those assist features, getting in through that learning curve, we find that we've been able to appeal to that full gamut of operators that are out there. So thank you all for sending us your questions. Exciting times, proud to be part of the Caterpillar team that has brought this to production. We certainly invite you if you've got questions or want to learn more about CAT Command or even reach out to your dealer and come visit us here in Clayton, North Carolina. We would love to host you. So get out there, contact your CAT dealers and learn more about this exciting new technology, CAT Command and Command for Loading.